give me a little background about yourself. I'd love to hear about your your beginnings here, your your family lineage, and mm. um, and so on, if you wouldn't mind sharing. Okay. Yeah, I grew up right here. I'm yeah. Kind of poly and um, oldest of four, uh, two sisters and a brother. Um, so. Mom didn't work till I was like 10 years old. Dad, you know, worked for a plantation. And he worked for a plantation even before getting married. Mm. His dad worked for a sugar plantation as well. Right. Different districts. I guess he moved, tried. And then, uh, um, yeah, the Sheraton was about to get built. It was Pioneer Mill or Amtrak um, was looking to get into the visiting industry. So we're, we're kind of excited that mom was going to get a job mm. at the hotel and, um, you know, a little more income. So was tourism big then or was no, it just starting to, not that Sheridan was the beginning yeah. of? Yeah, there were okay. small hotels, you know, motel type, but. Sure. Um, yeah, Sheraton is, was, a, a Sheraton and Royal Lahaina was, I believe, the first two okay. that, that were first in 62. 263. So then it was really plantation uh, was until then, a, was pretty a lot much of the, the economy. In, yeah. Okay. The majority. Yeah. And so, um, yeah, and at Venice, so we, we, we went to church on Sabbath, Saturdays, and then uh, Sundays would be the family day. We'd go to, go to the beach, and Dad would go get fish for the week and mm. for the day. And, so the uncles, we'd set traps down uh, where Sheraton is on the pier. And I mean, I was like, you know, four, five, six. Wow. And we'd have to haul up the, the <laughs> fish traps. Yeah. Yeah. And kind of kind of cool, yeah, but uh, mo mostly spear, spear diving, though. So that was a wow. source of protein. Yeah, meat too expensive, yeah. Otherwise, you eat canned goods. But so that was a. And then you grow your vegetables, you get your chickens, yeah. So, chickens yeah. are everywhere. They're they're <laughs> well, all over no, the island yeah, right no, now. Yeah, no. we pull up at the at the place for lunch. There's chickens. You pull up at the grocery yeah. store. There's chickens. So there's plenty to eat. Plenty <laughs> chicken to eat. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. Yeah. How important growing up? I mean, the the sense of family. I know how important that is to the Hawaiian culture. Oh yeah. Oh. Uh, for us, we we out of town. We considered country out here. You know, Lahaina was the main town, and sort of bulk of the, the population was there. Mm. And above us, Pukuli Village. It was a another larger plantation community. Um, uh, there was an elementary school, a plantation store. Um, so back then, the rent was like sixteen dollars a month and dollar yeah. for water. Yeah. Wow. And yeah, so all the fruit trees, those uh, Asian communities or uh, people, they, they would grow their hybrid mangoes and lychee. And, you know, it was, it was, uh, so the camps had Japanese camp, Filipino camp. Right. The Hawaiians live kind of in, you know, certain areas, but eventually it kind of mixed up, but. So we go fish, dad would share seaweed and fish, but that was, you know, the early years. Mm. And then uh, ended up, yeah, I went kindergarten up at Pukuli, but uh, the, from first grade through eighth grade was in town. Okay. So we'd get bus, we'd wait at the bus stop uh, down on the road, the main road, and get bus to school. There. Sure. Yeah. Sure. And yeah. Much more country, I would say. Would you, would the, I mean, obviously, today it's yeah, so built up. Yeah, Kanapali was mid-country, and then Honolulu would be, you know, country, country. Right? Sure, yeah. sure. So all these communities, predominantly, well, from Mahinahina on to Honokaha was all pineapple plantation. And then from this way to Ukumehame to Rapali was sugar. Okay. So, okay. Yeah, then one milestone was a 59 sugar strike. That was, mm. so we had soup kitchens and you know, you get, you get you get to see all your friends and you're playing together. But 
of uh, most most sort of fathers would go into uh, fish fishing gangs, you know, and they would bring bring the fish to the soup um, the soup kitchens. So, yeah, plantation life, hard, and it was good. It, it was, was good. good. Yeah, you know, you you get whatever you get from the ocean, you share with your neighbors, and you know, the next day or so they'll share some of their vegetables. They 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 have growing, yeah. So it's constantly, you know, exchange of food was, you know, um, the main subject of the day, right? <laughs> that's it, right? We have to eat, yeah. right? So a lot of your day has to focus on yeah. where that's coming from. Yeah. Yeah. The sense of community yeah. um, seems to be a big part of the Hawaiian oh, culture. Definitely. It's it's for my brothers, my sisters, my uncles, my aunties. Yeah. yeah. Right? So yeah. With that being said, you grew up within that framework, which for you today, I'm sure is still very important to you. Yeah, um, yeah, we hold a lot of the same values, I guess. Uh, you know, you, you help with what you can, you share what you get. Yeah. yeah. With everything happening, I mean, you, you've seen, um, you know, growing up here, watching the infrastructure build. Yeah, um, the buildings, the resorts, tourism is now um, a large, large part of the economy here. Right. Um, you know, as an island, it's hard. Your resources are only so plentiful here, and so so much of it is dependent upon what comes in from here as well, right? It yeah, everything gets shipped in. Majority of the food gets shipped in, but, which is um, very different from your upbringing. Yeah, the, uh, the food stuffs, uh, our main staple was rice back then, mm. but on the outskirts would be, you know, the, the taro growers, and dad would grow sweet potato, but um, our main staple would be rice, so when there's a, a strike, a shipping strike, oh, just stock up on the rice and, yeah. you know, to stay alive. Get us through. Yeah. Yeah. So moving forward, coming up out of school, growing up through the communities, um, you, you go into your profession. What, what did you? Yeah, uh, after high school, I went to the community college for three semesters. And yeah. I was intending to go into the uh, Navy just because, okay. um, yeah, some of the cousins were married to a couple of sailors. And, hey, these guys good fun, eh? <laughs> and they, they're all talented with their uh, occupational skills. Sure. So. So, 73, I went to boot camp San Diego and, and spent four years in the service, okay. the full four, and got to see many places I wouldn't have, you know, otherwise. Sure. Yeah, as far west as Africa, Kenya, wow. Singapore, Thailand, but I was on a destroyer, so, you know, you get to see the smaller ports, yeah. Absolutely. And then, yeah, Vietnam was just wrapping up, so. Okay. We did little work offshore Vietnam and uh, escorted some of the refugees and processed them in the Philippines and Guam. But what did you do in the Navy? What was your position? The rate was called hull maintenance technician. Okay. It covered uh, damage control and ship fitter. Uh, two rates combined in one. So it was damage control man. Yeah, so soon after boot camp, um, uh, the recruiter set me up real good. You know, unlike a lot of the horror stories, some of the guys, they say, ah, he screwed me over, but right. yeah, he set me up good. Oh, Ar good. Arnie Huff, I would love to Is that right? thank him again. Yeah. yeah. Never saw him, I don't know if he moved away, mm. but set me up with a good Navy A school, a Treasure Island San Fran was damage control school, and you know, it did, that's where I learned firefighting first Yeah, and, and teaching you a trade. I mean, oh, yeah. that's, yeah. you know, that was the most important. It's probably a lot of why you decided to go down that path. It would give sure. you a trade for after yeah. the military. Yeah. Then San Diego was the trade site. Right, too. right. Welding and ship feeding. Yeah. Welding that was your first metal. exposure to firefighting. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh, exposure and I have. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I bet. Shit. I bet. Yeah, there was like three uh, large buildings and different types of fire, yeah. Yeah. Alpha, Bravo. And what year, what years was it? 73. 73. Yeah. Okay. Treasure Island today is uh, condos, I believe. But I uh, had many other um, schools over there, Navy A schools. Right. Yeah, so that was a, 
Luckily, uh, my, we had my dad's brother. He's an army veteran. Um, see, the, my grandpa took my his family back to the Philippines, except one one of the daughters. But they're all born in Hawaii, so they're American citizens. But right. when he took them back, the World War II broke out, and okay. the Japanese were occupying. So yeah. Anyway, uncle was uh, living in San Fran, so they would come pick me up every Friday, take me home, and uh, whew, get to you know chill down, yeah, and right. decompress sure. from the sure. weekend. And then, then San Diego, uh, me and a California guy drove down. Uh, and that was, yeah, what a good time, you know. I'm sure. And then, yeah, then, I but got you came home. Station up Pearl Harbor. Yeah. Yeah. And then after service time, um, I was hoping to collect unemployment for you know a couple of months and just <laughs> sit just, on a beach, go surf, it, yep. and and play, right? Sure. No, they called me and offered a recreation job with the park, so I, I got into the recreation side, and that was a good journey too. Um, working with all the kids after school program sure fifth through eighth grade mm. and then at night we do the adult uh, recreational sports yeah okay yeah everybody active oh yeah in the community softball and um, basketball mm. volleyball yeah yeah so we we run some of the leagues and referee the games and so yeah, yeah along with everything that comes with it yeah a good time yeah then, then uh, a job opening opened up, um, so guys would tell me, hey, you better go sign up. So For the I, fire department. Yeah. Mm. A couple of firefighters I knew uh, back then, and uh, so signed up, and yeah. Was it because you, you enjoyed it in the Navy, or was it, this is a good, solid job, this will give me a good... You know, I was comfortable going in, confident. I mean, yeah, couldn't be that bad. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's right. Yeah. But uh, you know, working in a community is is you know is, is satisfying. Yeah. Rewarding, in the community yeah. from which yeah. you come. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I started here, then I I moved uh, different parts of the island, uh, and got married. Let's see, eighty one. Yeah, I got mar married shortly after that and, you know, started to have kids, so. Okay. Really had to work, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but most of my, of my career, like everybody else, we all had second jobs and. Sure. I was using the GI Bill to go back to school, get, you know, took a few years to get a two-year degree, but. But you got it. Yeah. 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 What was the fire department like in those early days? I mean, I'm sure it was much more. Oh, yeah. Old school, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, each. Each station, each ship, they had, you know, their own ways of doing things, mm -hmm. and so yeah, I was blessed to to be with multiple crews. Yeah. You know, Lahaina first, then Wailuku, which is engine one. That's the first station, eh? and then uh, after that was uh, Kihei. Kihei is known for their brush fires back in the okay. day, so wildland fires. And it's all different districts, yeah. Well, I have to tell you, I was um, when we landed here, we got here the first night. We were here at night, so we, we didn't see anything. Come to the hotel. The next morning, we go out to explore. Yeah. And we're driving, and I go, this is nothing like what I pictured. I've never been here before. I picture Hawaii to be this lush, tropical environment, right? Green sure. and, and yeah. vibrant. And here, it's such, Maui is so unique as we traverse the topography here. You go from, you know, the up country that we've been. Yep. We're along yep. the coast here. Um, and there's such a variation, but a lot of it is um, flat and, and sloping up towards the mountains and the yep. volcano. Um, and it's, the vegetation is nothing what I thought it would be. It's very different. I envision, different yeah. I envision something very different. So, so understanding that uh, wildfires, brush fires, um, are commonplace here because of the way the vegetation is. Yeah. 
Uh, was that common back in your earlier days too, to have vegetation fires and things like that? Well, yeah, certain, you know, geographically on the windward side, the normal trades that blow on uh, northeast, you know, predominantly, um, the, it'll be the wetter side, right? So yeah. So more green, but on the leeward side, yeah, it'll get dry, you know, really dry in certain seasons. Sure. Right? And there's always a breeze. Yeah. There's always wind. Yep. For sure. Yeah. So the, the firehouse, um, fun times. I mean, those are, those are progressive times in the fire service, the 80s, the oh, 90s, yeah. Yeah. Um, and so on. What year did you retire? Um, 2010. Okay. Yeah. All right. So about 29. Yeah, 29. 29 years. Actual years. years and yeah. That. And you retired as a captain? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So take me through a little bit of your career. I'm just, I, I'd love to... I don't know. You know, it's um, to me. It, I feel like there's so many similarities. It's the firehouse. You know, it's that oh, kitchen table, no, front no. bumper. But then, it's very different too. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Um, and it evolves. Yeah, constantly. And we were blessed with uh, adding new stations. So promotions came a little quicker than normally, right? Because of the growth. Yeah. Mm. And so, but. The, the other blessing was working with so many different crews, mm. um, you know, at the different stations. We opened up um, Lanai, and opened up Kula, and opened up Kahului. But I worked in the Paia station when um, the old station was an old uh, horse stable. So, <laughs> and the guys that worked there, they're, they're laid back country guys. Yeah. And, and it's, it's, it's a Different geographical locations, you get different cultures. Sure, so, makes sense. And like Mako, known for their cowboy style. <laughs> and, um, so every every station would have a different, you know, uh, different, um, you know, talk story and sure. different ways of doing things. Sure. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so you, you, everybody adapts. So and with the diverse culture that we grew up with, it's. Pretty easy, yeah. To adapt. Yeah. yeah. Wherever you were assigned or wherever you yeah. wanted to go. You had to have a favorite, though. I have to think. There had to be... Yeah, we would rib each other, I mean. Yeah. Uh, you know, they, and even the language would vary, you know, the slang or uh, the dialect of each uh, geographical location is different, too. Right. Yeah. Serving your community. I mean, you, from, from the, you know, growing up, you, you have this twinkle in your eye about your childhood. I see it. You go to the Navy. From the Navy, you come out. You go into a recreation position, which is community-based. And then you go to the fire department, which is community-based. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Community is important. For sure, yeah. What, are the, um, what was it for you to, to serve, to give back to your community? Was, was that part of it? You know, when you're young, you're selfishly thinking, hey, what's in it for me? And right. then you gung-ho to do something, yeah, to, to be responding to all these different calls. Yeah. And, you know, over the years, you build up uh, skills in different areas, mechanical and whatever, and structural, you know, construction. So it all helps a career, yeah, and in your promotions, so... Yeah, it was rewarding. I do it all over again. I, I tell people. Yeah. yeah. It was rewarding. How was captain for you? Oh, how was captain? You enjoy for well, me? I mean I mean that in a way of, you know, twenty nine year career. Um, you're enjoying the life as a firefighter. I mean, being a backstep firefighter certainly has its perks. Um, yeah. when you yeah. decide to promote, it becomes a little bit different. Um, and a lot of people say that that company officer position is, in fact, the best position to have. I'm curious. Uh, that's a discussion, but, yeah. <laughs> um, you know, it puts a little more um, kuleana or responsibility mm. on your shoulder. You know, I want my guys to come home every night. Right. Right. Um, yeah, so you grow up and you grow into the position, yeah. Uh, driving, you know, driving the apparatus, you, you you get that sense of pride too. That's right. I mean, or any, any position, you know. Mm -hmm. Then rescue was formed up, uh, I forget what year, and uh, one of my buddies called me up and tells me, 
hey, let's get, you know, they're going to open up rescue. We go. He was my old, um, he was in recreation with me, and that guy is progressive, and we, we spear dive together, so he knew I was, you know, the ocean is second nature for me, and so I thought, nah, I'm happy out in Paia, you know, <laughs> locals, and you get to study, you know, yeah. and uh, do what you need to do, and growing family, and he kept bugging me, and I finally said, okay, okay, that, you know, I'll go. Sound like, you know, uh, another challenge, yeah? Good fun. Uh, so we went, and it, it was another challenge and good fun. Uh, we Foundation got to of, do, formation of a new rescue company. Yeah, yeah, mm. Rescue One out of Wailuku. And then today, eventually, when Kaolu was built, it became Rescue 10. But, okay. Um, yeah, we were one of the first ones. So our first uh, rescue truck was... Uh, you know, bench seat uh, Ford pickup, and everything had to go in, right? Three <laughs> three guys inside, and then the, the Ford man would be on a, a, a backup pumper. So, you know, depending on the call, either three go or two and two. Right. And then, yeah, eventually we acquired a used tanker. That was tanker one, the only tanker in the department. Hmm. And that was uh, another position, so... Um, yeah, we I kind of watched the, the department grow. That was with pretty, with the community growing, right? Yeah, you talked about the tourism swing. You know, the the resorts being built, yeah. and with that comes the housing for the people yep. um, that work Increased there. Increased population, and, yeah. And tourist population, yeah. And you mentioned many new companies opening while you were yeah. part of the department. Yeah. That's an exciting time for a fire department, but it's also uh, can be challenging, More challenging as well. Yeah. yeah. To increase capacity. But thankfully, our leaders um, and yeah, the, all the leaders in government and the community collaborated fairly well, you know. Not without glitches, but they collaborated well and, you know, we were able to get the kind of standards and um, administrative and, and equipment wise and manpower sure. increase. Yeah. Sure. So, yeah, we're blessed though, yeah. Okay. So, the fires that happened in Lahaina. Mm -hmm. um, you know, speaking with Chief Amos, um, you know, we, uh, that's, that is how all of this began, is to find out, like I was saying before, um, to really dive in and understand the stories there, the truth of what, what's happening, um, with, from the eyes of the people that have been directly involved, um, from the firefighters, their perspective, um, their struggles, their challenges, um, and obviously the community ahead. Um, so, yeah. Um, I happened to spend my last, uh, what, 10, 11 years, I think, in Lahaina mm. District. Yeah. It's because my parents were getting old. Dad passed away in 2001, about two weeks before the attack. And, and then mom wasn't well, so I came home and I was trying to juggling. Anyway, right. so I got stationed in Lahaina, you know, last 10, 11 years, I think, right, in, right at home, yeah. It was so home. That was good, um, yeah. Uh, we'd we'd um, have the parades, but um, talking about um, the area with the calls, the type of calls, yeah. Yeah, I don't miss the car accidents, but, you know, I go back to the story with the guys, but um, I don't. I don't miss the car accidents, and and uh, yeah, seem like we get we we are having an increase in uh, wildland fires. Yeah. So department, is, I'd say, was really progressive in um, the training programs, coming up to par with NFPA standards, and. Um, taking a lot of notes from the states. Uh, California, they had the, uh, uh, what was it called, the um, exposure report. Mm -hmm. So we take some of their, you know, their, their programs or um, policies and use them here right. to where it applies. And so our leaders were, you know, really progressive, I thought, um, with keeping up with the trends and the new new technologies and new equipment, you know, we, and 
then yeah, I had a chance to help spec out one of the uh, one of the engine three or uh, Lahaina trucks. That's Lahaina, yeah. Yeah. So after uh, during that time, we was getting quite a bit of wildland fires. You know, once the sugarcane was uh, was shut down, uh, the fields started to be open and dry. Yeah. Is that what all that is along the bypass there, all that open space? Oh, was yeah. that that was, all, that was sugar cane all plantation? Sugar cane, all the way up to the bottom of Mount Ball. Okay. I mean, as far as the machines could go, they'd, they'd be cultivating sugar cane. And now today it's just covered in dry yeah, vegetation. Fellow, fellow lands, yeah. yeah. And so winter time it would be rainy and all the, you know, all the underbrush would come up and so heavy fuels. Yeah, for sure. So and areas. it's been dry. Yeah. Right? There's been a drought, if you will, uh, from what I hear. It's been yeah. drier, drier than normal. Yeah. Yeah. In the in the bunch of years past, just recently. Yeah. But just one other note too Please. regarding that. Back in the day, the sugar canes were irrigated with furrow irrigation, so they ran waters through, um, you know, waterways and flumes. And right irrigated the fields that way and eventually they wanted to preserve water I guess and um, so I think that that has an impact on the, the land landscape today you know um, they, they converted to sprinkler you know eventually the whole uh, irrigation uh, program was sprinklered and drip irrigation right. so so you know the I don't know, I think our water table depleted with all the diversions. So that's another, you know, um, factor that contribute to the dry lands. Yeah, you know, the for diver sure. Water diversions. So, for sure. Yeah. So when you were um, in Lahaina and, um, you know, you said that wildfires became a little more prevalent. It was, yep. They were happening more and more. Yep. So it's it's been a threat for quite some time now. Yeah. And... Yeah, department offered, not offered, but uh, required us to to uh, educate the public with a program called Firewise. Mm. And so there were brochures and we'd, we'd hold our prevention week, we, we'd uh, visit the schools and kind of educate the kids as much as we can with, you know, um, as well as the communities with the, the senior programs. And we'd try to get the word out you know, one way or the other, and Firewise was a, a means of educating some of the public. Yeah, I mean, Lahaina Town was an old oh, infrastructure, yeah. right? Yep. You're talking, you know, ordinary wood construction. Very single, single wall. Single yep. wall. Majority, yep. Uh, incredible exposure problems. Or buildings were Zero built. lot line. Yeah. They're all back to back. Yeah. We talk about it. You know, back back in the day, Rada, I hope. I'm all, sure you've had some fires in Lahaina Town during your tenure. Yeah, yeah. Buildings um, like that are not. Building construction is our enemy. So one of the chiefs fire. implemented the uh, uh, sprinkler requirement, and not all not all businesses could afford it. Yeah, right. so. Uh, so not all of them were sprinklered, and I don't know how how much of it got caught up, but then the other factor regarding, um, you know, fire spread was some of our streets, our plantation era streets, yeah. Um, yeah. Fire wise is, is really not, wasn't planned for condensed population. Yeah. And then you get generations of three and four generations of families living in the same house. Right. So you get cars on the street. I mean, uh, we've been through structural fires where, hey, we're looking for a hydrant. And, uh, you know, cars would be blocking it. And so it, there'd be a, some delays, you know, a lot of times. And so we'd really have to, uh, we try to pre-plan the areas and know where our source is and on and on. But yeah, definitely many factors contributed to this. This devastation. Yes. Yeah. Yes. The wind that day. Oh, I was watching it. I live right below the schools, up on a hill, 
and we, the wife and I watched the uh, thing just evolve. And we, we evacuated about 4, 4.30. Uh, we're, you know, I was uh, securing the house during that time. You know? Right. The winds were just unreal. Yeah. Um, we'd see it before, but not at that intensity. Not at that intensity. And then we're communicating before we lost communication with a daughter in Hana. She's telling us this typical day. It's, you know, no, not, it's they not windy at they all. They weren't experiencing no. on the other side of the island. Not windy at all, just a typical trade wind day. Yeah. And then the other daughter in Waikapu, well, when we evacuated, we reached there. It's like a, another typical day. You never know that there was uh, that intense wind, you know. Yeah. But then, uh, you know, we, we know that the historical Kawaula winds, um, I've heard it, my, my cousin's grandma would talk about it, that, oh, the Kawaula winds. The people are so scared, they run to the caves and hide back in the day. Really? So that was the story that yeah. handed down. Right? Sure. So you know my my thoughts are winds. I mean I fish and and you know we live on the leeward side. I've lived on the windward side, but we fish, so we are constantly aware of the weather, right? And and the wind conditions, wind direction it makes a difference where where you gonna fish. Right. So yeah. So these Kaula winds, I know certain angle of a, a wind, it'll funnel and just throw a jet stream down. And we watched, we was listening to roof, our roof shingles tumbling on the roof. Um, stuff would, you know, fly and break. We could hear, hear all that wind stuff going there. Eh? And we watched, we watched a fire evolve. And then- From the, your vantage point, yeah. you were up yeah, right. we're up on a hill. Yeah. And we've got a, a, a roof deck. You know, I like to check out the water, so I sure. built a 14 by 14 roof deck. Yeah. And we're up there. I was up there with helmet and goggles and really? dust mats. Yeah, I was up there. Wow. And my my um my wildland jacket, the old one. Yeah. Um, yeah, I had it on because. Something came flying. We couldn't you know, right. move it in time. Yeah. So were we you were watching it? Were fires on your mind? That the conditions that day? Yeah. That morning there was a there was a a, a brush fire. Yeah. And they, they put it out, and then the thing lit up. I don't know what time it started in the afternoon. Maybe three two, or two, three, three o'clock. Yeah. yeah. And so we watched that thing evolve and till till we had to. Um, Evacuate. Yourself. Police came around a couple times, uh, and you know, inform on a loudspeaker. Evacuate! You gotta evacuate. Some of the guys hunkered down, and thankfully, you know, they, they lived in our subdivision. Yeah. So the subdivision. When you say guys, is that other retired families. firefighters, families? No, no, families. Yeah. Okay. The one across the family across the street, um, the dad or the grandpa. He's on dialysis, so they didn't want to move. They were gonna just uh, protect their house. Yeah. And I guess they were watching the angle of the fire too. But you know, I was, I, I thought, yeah, we'll, we'll, you know, evacuate. Yeah. Just in case the, the wind switches. All that morning, the wind was switching from ocean. You know, it, it would would stop for a minute and then come back from the mountain. In, during the morning hours, it would switch. Yeah. And it was switching. Yeah. So, and that's not, that's not unusual, um, you know, on this leeward side. But, right. Um, extreme, though, definitely extreme. With your knowledge of Lahaina, um, being a captain, firefighter, responding to that community for so many years. And now, with the winds that are happening and the fires that are lighting off, did you have the concern that there could potentially be a firestorm of, of such a magnitude? 
Yeah, if, uh, I would think if one house started with, with that kind of wind, yeah. with, with the gust that they, uh, that was reported in the local area, uh, we would be losing some houses. Yeah. But, it was, yeah, I was pretty concerned for our firefighters too. And, you know, how many hurricanes, the other factor was, how many hurricanes came through and uh, nothing severe happened, yeah? A few minor roof damages, but, but to, except for the 2018 fire. That was a hurricane fire, but not as extreme, uh, close to it, but yeah. Yeah, it's always a, a fear sure. of losing the town. Yeah. The the cards were stacked against the oh. crews. Oh yeah, for sure. Early on, I mean, I think within half an hour, they might have been overcome already. I mean, yeah, maybe had, longer. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. Well, we had some we had some conversation yesterday and hearing about how conditions deteriorated so fast, what people were faced with at the immediate walls of fire. Yeah. Fire was consuming at a rate that was unfathomable. You couldn't you, it it defied logic at the speed in which this oh, fire yeah. was destroying. And with multiple hits, you know, you get initially only two companies, well, three with the ladder, and then next help is, what, 20 minutes, 30 minutes away, yeah? And they had their hands full on the other side, too. That's so, right. You know, yeah, I doubt if we could even get enough people. Freaking army wouldn't have stopped no, that. I don't think so. No. Yeah. So, you know, just a so-called perfect storm, but tragic, you know, it's terrible. Lahaina yeah, Town must hurting. be very special to you. I know when I talk about it with people over the last few days, everybody gets this, uh, this twinkle in their eye about oh, it. Oh, yeah. It was a yeah. special place. Oh, yeah. Still yeah. a special place. Yeah. No doubt. Yeah. Um, Seeing what has happened um, with the destruction that has happened there and, and now so much will come from this um, as the community tries to heal and rebuild um, and so on. Yourself, um, you know, where, where are you with the process? Are you getting involved? Are you a part of, um, you know, the, the, uh, the, you yeah. know, the processes? And Early on, I was mainly supporting on the distribution pods, mm. the point of distribution. And getting information back and forth. And uh, I didn't go into ground zero or you know, near the exposure, but um, just supporting on the outside, I participated in some of the meetings, most of the meetings on the, you know, the first two, three weeks. Yeah. And helping to organize, um, organize our level of task, our mission, which was basically um, Community aid, West Maui Community aid. So, thankfully, uh, Amos came on board and um, you know really drew out flip sheets and gave everybody there a sense of organization. You yeah. Know, uh, out in Lahaina, we get some strong people that uh, showed up, and uh, but a second and third day, he had all of us lined up and kind of in the same, having the same vision of each of our missions, yeah, and, and supporting the community. So, yeah, so it's the best we could do, I think, with what we had, yeah. But For sure, but you had one another. I mean, I think that's the, that's the thing, you know, from, from early on in our conversation, you talked about the importance of your upbringing and how there was a sense of community where people shared protein, shared fish, shared their vegetables. Yep. That's all you know. Yeah, so we've seen a lot of that in many different areas of the community and multiple areas in our area. Yeah, so people, wherever they got them from, they, they brought them in, you know, people was, from Molokai was boating them in. And, yeah. You know calls from all over once we got communication, so yeah. Yeah, 
a long road ahead for sure for so oh, many. No doubt. Um, yeah. And it's protecting the integrity and uh, legacy of the heritage that was there, the many generations um, that had their homes, their property, oh, their families. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, there's families that, you know, buried their, their ancestors right in their property. Right. Thinking that this will stay in the family's um, property, you know, yeah. in perpetuity. But, and then we get multi, multiculturals, yeah. So they have their, you know, and we all respected each other. So, um, yeah, so they, we all have our values, yeah. Of course. Yeah. Of course. I think, um, I think the conversation of community and then sitting back and I'm watching you, you sat back in your chair when, when we were talking about the fire department and their response and how they were just outmanned, outgunned, yeah. um, and so on. That is a, uh, that is a feeling of um, defeat, which is hard for firefighters. For sure. You lose one house, you're defeated, you know. Oh, what could have you done different, yeah? Yeah. But, you know, we have many factors, as we know. Um, the, the delay of call, the, the acceleration of the fire with, you know. So many, many factors that play into it. But. I, think, um, I think what's important, and I know for me, um, what's always been important for me are the senior guys, the guys that put their time in and have done so much for the department to move the department forward. Yeah. Moments like this is where I think companies and departments need to lean on some of their senior people that have retired but still hold a tremendous passion and love for the job in the firehouse. Um, and, you know, I think you being a part of that process, Chief Amos and several other retirees from what I hear have been involved in the processes of, of recovery and, and, and so on. Um, I think that's important. I think that your um, experience um, can bring a lot to the table for the companies that operated that day because the range of emotions that they're going to be feeling over the next, you know, yep. many months and maybe years ahead yep. is going to take a lot of time for healing and, and understanding. So, yeah, regarding that, um, we had an opportunity to visit some of the fire. Mm -hmm fire station, the crews uh, in Lahaina area, Napili and Lahaina. So um, Captain, retired uh, crash and rescue Captain Nakani Lua, he, he uh, offered to help some of the guys in, we, yeah, so in a traditional manner um, with some of the Hawaiian ritual, sure. cleansing ritual. Mm -hmm. And he that he perf performed on individually and the company and the station, so that was good for us and was really good for the guys that participated. We didn't get to go around with everybody, not quite yet, you know. We, but um, plan to do more visits and yeah. talk story and let them know. I, you know, I tried to encourage them. Hey, uh, we're always going to be here for you. We know. You know, we know what you guys might have been up against. You know, we have some idea. <laughs> maybe, yeah, maybe, um, yeah. So, and some of the guys, you know, we work together, yeah. Sure. Some of the, sure. Yeah, so it's, it's all kind of mix of emotions and, and you try to, try to encourage them, go back, go back work and, you know, continue on and, Hold your head up high, you know, because that's shit. it. This is this this, uh, this this was a disaster. Yeah. You know? Shit. So. Yeah. Hold them on. Keep going. Keep going. Yeah. Well, I think coming from you and um, your other brothers and, and sisters um, retired uh, can bring so much value to the guys, girls that are on the streets today, providing services. Hope so. Hope so. I believe and so. And then there's a part of me too, uh, you know, I, I don't want to be crying with everybody, but it's like, 
can I handle it, you know, you know, to yeah. be there with them. Of course. So, um, that's, that's the, the other thing, yeah. The, um, it's, it's still very, very real for everyone, obviously. Oh, yeah. it's, it's only been a month and a half, if that, since the fires occurred. And um, the process has been slow from what I'm hearing and so on. Um, and so, yeah, the emotional value of it will remain for a long time to come. And um, it's important, you know, we talk about mental health in the fire service yep. and how we've become much more in tune with being careful of that more so now than we've ever been before. Yep. You know, I'm yep. sure when in your earlier days, mental health was not really talked about much. No, not yeah. in the, probably the first half, but once I think the, I, I may be mistaken, mm. but one of the first times we got introduced to the treatment, uh, post-traumatic yeah. stress was a uh, air Molokai crash. And I always get choked uh, up talking about it, but yeah. Um, anyway, uh, that was the first exposure to, um, you know, dealing with heavy, heavy calls. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah, so I, I wasn't trained to help people, but, I, you know, I have, do have relationships with most of the guys in, uh, that I know and you know we can just talk start and that's a that's good a, start yeah absolutely that's a good start yeah I think it call that's, them up once in a while on the phone but you know we have a we have a responsibility to one another as yep. brothers to uh, be there for when they need us to be there um, but you also can't lose track of your own senses to be yeah. there for others yeah so well, I want to say this. Um, this conversation has been incredible. Thank you. Thank you for talking with me today. I'm sure it wasn't easy for you to sit down and some part, yeah, talk some part, about this. But yeah. But um, I value it very much. And, and you know, in regards to um, you being able to bring so much to the table for the other Maui firefighters and so on, it's because we look to our brothers and sisters who are retired that have the experience on the job that can understand and relate to the guys that are out there today. And uh, we value your position and we value your information and experience for sure. So yeah, thank you. I want to be there, you know. I hope, of course. I hope I can be uh, assisting, but yeah. yeah. Well, I'll I take care what we can take care. Yeah. yeah, well I wish you, you know, nothing but upward from here. And, um, you know, and supporting one another is so important. And, yeah, Jeremy. Um, thank you for taking a few minutes ah, today. Yeah. I appreciate you, brother, very much, Captain. Thank you. You guys be safe out there, too. You guys get your share, yeah? We do. Whew. We do. And um, I'll be honest, you know, uh, this process, we're decompressing every night. And, yeah. and after we talk with everybody um, and... Uh, for us, the story is, is so important to be able to share correctly um, and to paint an accurate picture um, about the people that have been involved and, and what that's done. Um, and so the trust that you all have in us to sit with us and to share does not come lightly. And at night, I promise you, there's a moment or two where we decompress about the stories being told. And, um, yeah, and so tough story. Yeah. yeah. But storytelling is important in our business. The fire service is built on the traditions oh, and the culture. cultures. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah. So, but thank you for your time today. Oh, I yeah. really do appreciate it.